as I said, it is a joy to drive. It always gets lots of attention. Uh, it's, um, it, it is quite interesting to pull up at uh, McDonald's in it. Um, you know, you usually get what you want and uh, some fairly prompt service. <laughs>
uh, several marks of machine that uh, came out. The original Mark I was a liaison vehicle, so unlike mine, which is configured as a Mark II, it didn't have a turret. So that, uh, that enabled it to have a, uh, a very low profile um, uh, silhouette, which uh, made it excellent for uh, reconnaissance, uh, observation, and also coordinating with um, you know, nearby armoured elements. Uh, that gave it a, uh, a height of only about 1.5 metres, uh, which made it very, very easy to conceal with uh, you know, minimal, uh, minimal effort. Several revolutions of a machine came uh, came to be over its years. Uh, the Mark II, as you see behind me, uh, was uh, developed in around about two years after it originally hit um, hit the British Army, and that was in response to uh, the, the Brits realising that uh, the lack of a turret didn't really give a lot of overhead protection from uh, shell fire, um, uh, sniper rounds, etc. So the uh, turret was developed and uh, that was the predominant um, configuration of the machine throughout its service life. And indeed the uh, version most used by the Australian Army, we, produced, we pr purchased around about 250 machines in the early 50s. Uh, and they look just like this one with the Mark II turret. Towards the end of its service life, uh, features such as uh, vigilante anti-tank missiles were um, were trialled and uh, used as a bit of a stopgap until the uh, uh, combat vehicle reconnaissance uh, tracked series of vehicles ended up coming out in the uh, in the 70s, and they were able to uh, provide a bit more uh, mobility off-road, more firepower, and that sort of really spelt the uh, the demise of the ferret in uh, frontline combat around the world. Uh, when I say it was used around the world, it was used in many continents uh, by many armies, um, frontline armies, um, uh, third world armies, uh, insurgencies even got their hands on them. Uh, it was used uh, extensively by the British Army in um, places like Aden um, for peacekeeping duties. It was also used uh, uh, in Cyprus, um, Greece for peacekeeping duties as part of UN attachments. So on the internet you will see a lot of white ferrets um, getting around there and uh, yeah, that is a, um, a genuine configuration there. Uh, they were um, used extensively by the UN, um, by both the British and the Canadian armies. Um, Commonwealth York forces were the predominant users of the ferret. Um, although, as I said, they did find their way down into um, uh, uh, African countries as well. Um, the Rhodesian army also used them, um, uh, as did the South Africans at a brief point in time. Uh, and you get some very interesting um, uh, modifications that were employed. By, um, by those countries, such as using recoilless rifles um, uh, bolted onto the turrets to give them a bit more um, firepower. Uh, Performance-wise, what else can I say? The, um, it, the machine handles beautifully on and off-road. Its uh, steering is very light, except if you're trying to uh, uh, turn, it, uh, turn it around in a tight circle at low speed, because it does have no power steering and rather heavy tyres. Um, but otherwise, it, um, it, it performs um, very, very well. Uh, not so much known for their braking power. This is you know, a 4.2, 4.3 tonne machine with unassisted brake drums. So it does take a little bit of pulling up, uh, constantly having to sort of think around about two, 300 metres in advance when you think about stopping. Um, but you know, they were built for going fast forwards and backwards, not for stopping.
off-road wise the machine can also easily forward uh, about 900 millimeters of water unprepared which is uh, pretty interesting considering it's a petrol engine the uh, British developed the, um, the Rolls-Royce engine specifically around battlefield use and, uh, and protecting against RF interference and water by um, fully sealing all of the um, ignition leads, um, spark plugs, distributor, spark, um, uh, spark plugs themselves. Uh, everything is protected um, against uh, water ingress and is uh, fully shielded so that it doesn't interfere with the uh, VHF radios of the time which were quite susceptible to um, uh, high voltages uh, generated by the ignition coils. Uh, the distributor is also positively um, charged atmospherically wise uh, at all times by the um, air intake uh, so again giving it some um, uh, very good um, resistance to water ingress. Uh, furthermore, if uh, water does enter the hull, the uh, fan has been specifically designed around uh, uh, like, a, like an impeller or a turbine. Uh, it's cast aluminium blades um, are designed to, um, to churn through, through water without uh, breaking or um, uh, causing undue wear of the uh, bearings. So yeah, it'll, keep on, it'll basically keep on running until the, uh, the fighting department fills up for water and the, uh, and the personnel are forced to evacuate. Armament wise, as with any reconnaissance vehicle, if you're using your armament, you're in a lot of trouble. So the uh, ferret was only equipped with a medium machine gun. Uh, several medium machine guns were used throughout its life. It started out with the good old Bren uh, light machine gun from uh, World War II days, mounted in a pintle uh, on top of the vehicle, remembering that was the turretless version. And then as it progressed through to the turret, um, it used a M1919 uh, 30 caliber machine gun uh, chambered in 7.62 by 51 NATO and that's a configura similar configuration to what you see on mine. So driving the ferret on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not my daily drive, but like anything, uh, it does like to get out and about. Um, you know, keeps it, uh, it keeps it in tip-top mechanical shape, stops oil seals from leaking as much. Are uh, they being British? Uh, you know, if it's not leaking, it means you're probably out of oil, which is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, I, it, I love driving it, basically. Um, it is a joy to drive, uh, and you know, there is nothing better than pulling up and uh, getting a coffee and seeing uh, you know, fathers and sons, mums and dads with uh, kids in tow coming in to, say, to uh, have a good look at it uh, you know, and watching the kids uh, you know, jump, basically jump for joy when they get told, yeah, climb on over it, no worries, there's nothing you can, you know, nothing you can do to hurt it. Uh, it is really, uh, really great as far as I'm concerned, keeping a little bit of history alive. Um, yeah, and, and that's one of the reasons why I bought it. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it is really awesome to be able to uh, very, very occasionally come across um, uh, chaps who used to drive these uh, in the surface. Uh, the, the reactions are, are usually one of absolute amazement that you know, A, they're seeing a ferret and B, they can see one that can uh, you know, get on the road. So uh, you know, getting those guys to um, to jump up in the turret and go for a bit of a uh, bit of a spin, uh, look, it's fantastic. It takes uh, really is a trip down memory lane um, for those ex servicemen, and uh, yeah, you know, it's just you know, one little thing that uh, you know, can be done to uh, you know I suppose give back a bit uh, and show the appreciation because you know these machines, you know, they were made for um, they move they move these machines they were made for fighting. Um, yeah, so it's that's something that we you know we should always remember when we uh, we see these things out there. Uh, but you know, as I said, it is a joy to drive. It always gets lots of attention. Uh, it's um, it it is quite interesting to pull up at uh, McDonald's in it. Um, you know, usually get what you want and uh, some fairly prompt service. <laughs>